Good morning, everyone. As you are all aware, we await with bated breath the outpouring of the Holy Spirit this Pentecost. However, I felt led to introduce him to you. My favorite verses from the Bible that best describes the Holy Spirit are the words of Jesus in John 14, 15 to 18. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. And also the words in John 16, 17. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Such a comforting reassurance. Although I was born to a Christian family and had my schooling at a Christian school, I could honestly say I had no real introduction to the Holy Spirit. I don't remember ever hearing a sermon on the subject up until I received Christ into my life. We know we knew to trust in Jesus and to worship his Father, but I had no idea how to relate to the Spirit or even if I should. I suspect that many of us have a similar story. So let's begin with some introductions. The Holy Spirit is not an impersonal neuter, an it. He is more than a presence. He is not a ghost, holy or otherwise, the King James Version notwithstanding, of course. Rather, the Spirit is a person who works personally. He performs acts only a person can perform. He searches, 1 Corinthians 2.10, but God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. He speaks, Revelations 2.7, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. He cries, Galatians 4, 6. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. He prays, Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He testifies, John 15, 26, But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. He teaches, John 14, 26, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. He leads Christians, Romans 8, 24, for we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? He commands people, Acts 16, 6 and 7. Now, when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mycenae, they tried to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. But is he God? Why is the Holy Spirit why is the Spirit holy? The Holy Spirit is God for five reasons. The Holy Spirit possesses the four distinctly divine 
attributes. Eternity, Hebrews 9.14 How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Omnipresence, Psalm 139.7-10 Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the mornings and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. Omniscience, 1 Corinthians 2, 10 and 11. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Omnipotence, Luke 1.35 and the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is born will be called the Son of God. The Holy Spirit performs each of these three distinctly divine works. Creation can be found in Job 33, 4, Psalm 104, 30, and Genesis 1, 1 to 3. The impartation of life can be found in John 6, 63, and Genesis 2, 7. And the authorship of prophecy, 2 Peter 1, 21. I'm not reading those Bible references out due to the constraints of time, but they can be always looked up especially because of this um, presentation, which is on the screen, you can see the Bible verses. The Old Testament statements about God are applied to the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. See Exodus 16, 7 and Hebrews 3, 7 to 9. The name of the Holy Spirit is often coupled with that of God. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 6, Matthew 28, 19 to 20, and 2 Corinthians 13 and 14. The Holy Spirit is called God, Acts 5, 3 and 4. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. The Holy Spirit is God. Consequently, He matters a great deal. Bless you, friends, and have a good day. Thank you.